Okay, welcome to this JavaScript tutorial. Um, in this series of videos, what we're going to be doing is creating a JavaScript-based file upload uh, system. So before we get started, I think I'm, the best thing to do is just going to show you pretty much what we're going to be creating, um, and now I'll delete it all and we'll go through how to create it. So what we're going to be making is a page very, very simple, just like this. Um, so we're not going to be concentrating on any design type stuff. Um, and the way it works is you can browse for files. So if I just pick a few files, hit open, and then you can upload them. You can see that they uploaded immediately, which isn't quite what I wanted, but never mind. Um, there is actually a progress bar sort of meter thing, but I'll have to find a bigger file to test that with. Obviously I'm uploading these locally, it's not going to take very long. But anyway, as you can see, that all uploaded quite quickly with no um, page reloading like you would normally get when you upload a file. And these links just link to the files, so if we click on one we'll get the image that I uploaded. So for the sake of testing, let's just try and find a bigger file. So I'll hit browse again, and let's go... I'm not sure where I'm going to get a bigger file actually. Oh, okay. I found one. Let's upload this big zip file that I've got for some reason. Hit upload. And you can see now that we've got a percentage that goes up as the file is uploaded, and then at the end it disappears and the link is added to the page. So, um, like I said, this all works with JavaScript, which is quite a nice thing to know how to do, but there is a slight problem, which is browser compatibility, which I'll mention in a bit more detail as we get going, but um, for now I'll just say that it's quite important to always have like a fallback um, if the script doesn't work. So we're going to address that in a little while, but um, yeah, it's not going to um, it's not going to work with every browser. I think the method we're using support is Firefox, pretty much all versions, well, all recent versions back to about eight, I think. Um, Chrome, same situation. Opera is the latest version only, twelve uh, at the time of recording. Um, Internet Explorer is obviously no go because that's how Internet Explorer is. And I'm not sure about the other sort of mobile platforms, but um, yeah, that's something you can have to look into yourselves if you want to use it without a fallback method. Anyway, that's enough of introductions, um, so let's get on with the actual code. Right, that's the code removed, um, and now we'll be starting from scratch, more or less, um, creating the page I just showed you, basically. So, as you can see, the page is now completely blank, it doesn't actually do anything. Um, there is still a bit of HTML here, and I'll go over what we've got as a starting point in a moment, but it's essentially just um, well, basically nothing. But uh, like I said, I'll go over that in a moment. First thing I want to do, though, is go over the sort of file structure that we're going to be using. So if we just go to our folder here, you can see that we've got these two files here. One of them is called upload.php, and that's the actual page that we viewed in our browser. And one of them is called upload.js, and that's the one that um, that's the file, even JavaScript file, that um, is actually going to be doing the sort of JavaScript AJAX upload thing. And then we've got this files folder, which is just the folder that's where all, all of our files are going to get sort of put into once they're uploaded. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a simple upload page just in PHP, and then we're going to add the JavaScript afterwards. And the reason for this is that it's basically what I said earlier, that we need a fallback method for people that don't have support for this JavaScript method. Um, so if people, if someone, whoever is the user's browser, doesn't have um, the capa capability, then they'll just get the st simple, you know, PHP only upload form, um, and that's why we need to do this first. And also, it's quite a nice way to understand sort of the concept of what's going on a bit. So, first thing we're going to do is go across to our text editor here, and we'll just go over very briefly what we've got already. So, this empty PHP block at the top is where we're going to be processing our file uploads. Then down here, we've got a very simple sort of HTML heading. Um, and then a little tiny bit of HTML down here. So we've got a div with the ID of uploaded, and that's where we're going to be. Uh, that's where we're going to be displaying, if I learn to speak, all of our sort of you know the links, the file links that link to the actual files. And then just below that, there's this upload progress thing, and that's something we'll come back to later, um, because it's something that's only going to be used from JavaScript. And the reason we've got it set up here in our style. Um, to display none is that we don't want this to display if people don't have JavaScript enabled because it might break the page layout in some way. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much everything for the HTML. Um, and this final box down here is just where we're going to do the form, which is actually the first thing we're going to do. We're going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a new form. Its action is going to be the current page, so just empty. Its method 
is going to be a post, lowercase, and the enc type encoding, encryption, not encryption, encoding. I think it's encoding. I don't know. Enc, enc type has to be set to multi part slash form data because we're dealing with file uploads. That's just something you have to do. And then inside of here, we're going to have a, another div tag because you have to. And then we're going to have our two input elements. So one is going to be the file input. So we're going to create a new input with the type of file, not guile. The ID is something we won't worry about because that's going to be set later. I'm going to set the name to file with two square brackets because we're dealing with multiple file selections. Um, we need to have PHP create an array, and I'll show you what that means in a little in a moment. So a little while. Um, next attribute multiple uh, multiple equals multiple that's just so that people are able to select multiple uh, file attributes file uh, files even and that's that next we need the submit button so a new input with the type of submit the um, value can just be upload so, then if we just reload our browser now, we'll see what we've got, which is a simple file upload form that we can click browse and pick a load of random files, which isn't particularly useful, but um, there you go. So at the moment, the upload button does absolutely nothing. So what we need to do next is actually handle our upload. So go back to the code, and then in this top PHP block here, what we need to do first is check to see if someone has tried to upload some files. The way we can do that is by checking to see if the files array is not empty. And to just demonstrate the reason this works, I'll just add a print underscore r of the entire files array, like so. And then if we go back to our browser and I just pick a few files again, hit open and upload, you can see we get this big, horrible, useless looking text just via the page source so that we can see it in you know, formatted format. And then you can see that we have this uh, nice list of files. And the reason we added the two square brackets is so that we get multiple entries in each of these. If we didn't, we'd just get the final one um, without the array element numbers thing. So, as you can hopefully see, what we need to do is do a loop over each one of these files and then upload it, or well, it's already uploaded, move it into the folder. So, the way we're going to do that is just by using a... Well, first we need to do the check to see if someone's uploaded a file. The way we do that is by checking to see if the files array is not empty. Um, so, files file, which is the name of the um, form down below. File. See? Good. Okay, so what we need to do next is loop over each of the files. Now, if we just look back at the um, page source, or I'll just view it again, look back at the page source here, you can see that. Um, for each one of the files, it has an entry in this name um, thing, key, element, section, whatever. Um, and then it also has a corresponding entry in the type and the temp name and all the others. Well, it's error and size. Um, so this corresponds to this and this and so on. So what we can do is do a for each loop over these and then just use the key to reference these others. Um, it would be quite a lot easier if it was sort of organized differently, but um, it's not, so we can't do anything about that. Anyway, so the way we do this is using a for each loop. So for each files file name, which is that array I just highlighted a few times, as name, and then inside of here name would be each of the file names in turn. However, we also want the index, so as key points to the name. So then we have the key in the index. So then we can use, for example, files, uppercase, files, file, um, let's say size, key, like so. And that will give the size for this file that we're currently working with. So. For the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to be doing any of these sort of proper file upload validation stuff. Um, I'll leave that to you. There are plenty of other videos out there. Um, I think there's probably one on this channel. Um, 
well, I hope there is. So what we're going to be doing is a very simple check to make sure the file actually uploaded. Um, so we'll just do if files file error key is equal to zero, which means success, and move uploaded file, which is the function which is used to move a file that has been uploaded to a folder you're choosing, or you know a location. So here we'll do files file temp name and key, and we're going to be moving it to the files folder, which I showed you a moment ago. So files slash, and then we just want the name, which we have from the loop above. You could also use the actual files array if you want. Um, obviously with an underscore, like so. It will do the exact same thing. Uh, if I can type, there we go. However, it's just a little bit longer, so we're going to be using name. Okay, so if that has happened, it returns true. So this thing here will happen. Um, so what we're going to do is just add the name of the file to an uploaded array so that we can use it further down to create our links. Um, that should just be name, shouldn't it? Okay, like so. So that's that pretty much done. So let's just give this a test. So under here, let's add a print underscore r uploaded and we'll just test it out again. So we'll reload the page, hit browse, pick a few files, upload, and you can see that we have an array with the three file names. So that's good. So I think I'm going to leave this here because we've come to a nice sort of stopping point. Um, sorry if I've rushed through this first bit a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to get on to the actual focus of the tutorial really. Um, so in the next part we'll cover how to create the links, which is quite easy. And then in the parts after that, or whatever, we'll be working on the actual JavaScript to make this a lot nicer. So, that's it. Thank you for watching, and come back for part two.